Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> Have you ever wondered how clouds are made? Did you know every single raindrop, every snowflake, and every hailstone each has something in common inside them that allowed them to form in the first place? Welcome to Science with Bobbert. Dr. Smith and I are going to help you understand how today's scientists believe they understand how clouds form and also how precipitation like rain and snow is created in our clouds. Now in order to do this, we will need to see how scientists think about heat, which scientists like to call thermal energy, in order to understand the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. Scientists also call gases vapors. When it comes to cloud formation, scientists believe what happens in the clouds is literally super cool. And Dr. Smith and I will show you how to make a super cool cloud and super cool water in your own home. We will then wrap up with what scientists today only somewhat recently figured out, and that's answering the question, why is ice slippery? So let's get started. Heat is a form of energy. It is also known as thermal energy. That's because when heat is absorbed by a substance, the random and chaotic motion of its molecules move faster in all directions. That is the key behind understanding how scientists view solids, liquids, and gases. So what is the difference between a solid, liquid, and a gas? The answer is the speed of the molecules. At very low temperatures, all substances form a solid. In a solid, the molecules do not have the energy to fly away from each other. They stick together strongly through different types of attractive forces between the molecules. In a solid, it is common at the molecular level to have a repeating microscopic structure made by the molecules. Scientists can identify a solid by recognizing these repeating structures. Perhaps you have heard of crystals? Every crystal is constructed of identical units of molecules at the microscopic level. In a liquid, molecules stick together, however just not as strongly as they do in a solid. This is because there is now a higher temperature and that means a lot more thermal motion than in a solid. So the nice organized crystal and structure we saw in the solid is replaced with a random jumbled motion of loosely sticking together molecules. The same attractive forces are keeping liquids and solids together. It's just that in a liquid, there is a lot of thermal motion. That is how scientists think of a liquid. Notice how some molecules in a liquid are too energetic and find themselves shooting straight out of the liquid. When a molecule leaves the liquid, scientists call that evaporation. In fact, whenever liquid molecules are present, so too are gas molecules. Just can't stop evaporation. When the, when the escaped molecule re-enters the liquid, that's called condensation. Can't stop that either. Condensation and evaporation are constantly occurring on the surface of all liquids. In a gas, also known as a vapor, each molecule has absorbed so much thermal energy that it is moving way too fast and energetically for it to stick to other molecules. Because of this, vapors can get extremely hot. They just keep moving faster and faster as heat is added. That is why you have to be really careful around steam. It can get to be nice and fresh to the touch or extremely hot and dangerous. The only way to slow gas molecules down is to remove thermal energy. In other words, cool it down. So if we start with a solid, 
and slowly add heat to it, the solid will turn from a solid to a liquid to a vapor. However, cloud formation is the other way around. Water vapor molecules lose thermal energy. They slow down and condense to form microscopic water droplets. Scientists who have been studying cloud formation, however, have found that this is impossible. Water gas molecules never form microscopic droplets on their own. They always need something to stick onto. They won't stick to each other at first. That means inside every single microscopic water droplet in a cloud is a very small particle. Scientists call these particles hygroscopic nuclei. Now what is even more interesting is what do you think hygroscopic nuclei in our clouds consist of? Dirt? Dust? Smoke? Those would be good guesses, but they are all wrong. Scientists have found that the hygroscopic nuclei in Earth's clouds are most often small particles of salt. How do all these tiny particles of salt get into our atmosphere? Salt water, our oceans, cover 75% of the Earth. When the sun evaporates ocean water, the salt remains in the air and gets picked up by the wind and blown all over the Earth. So why don't raindrops taste salty? The salt concentration is so low, you can hardly even measure it, much less taste it. OK, let's see if we can make a cloud in a jar. It seems that all we need is a container, some water vapor, we'll use the hygroscopic nuclei that are naturally in the air, and then an air pump to create wind, which should cool down the water vapor to make microscopic water droplets. Okay, Dr. Smith, have at it. What we need is some air. Got it. Some water vapor. There's definitely water vapor in the air, but not a lot. And we want a nice thick cloud. So let's get more water vapor in our container by adding liquid water. Now we need a way to cool down the water vapor. So Dr. Sam is going to use an air pump to pump a high pressure of air inside the plastic bottle and release the top. And when the air blows out, that will be the wind. It should work. Let's see. Hmm, not much of a cloud. That's because the only hygroscopic nuclei is that what was naturally in the air. So let's try this again by adding a lot of hygroscopic nuclei. What Dr. Smith is using as hygroscopic nuclei isn't salt, but smoke. Wow, what a nice cloud. Let's check that out again, but in slow motion.
Okay, so that is how clouds are formed, but how does precipitation occur? Why don't all clouds form rain? And what is so super cool about it? Precipitation occurs when the water droplets get so big and heavy that they simply fall from the cloud due to gravity. The precipitation turns to snow if the air is cold enough, but how do the droplets get so big that they fall from the cloud? Scientists have found that only in certain clouds, such as rain clouds, is there a region of the cloud that is referred to as a supercooled region. In this region of the cloud, the air is so cold and clean, there's very few hygroscopic nuclei, that liquid water should form, but it doesn't. The water molecules remain in the vapor phase and are just itching to condense and form droplets, but they can't. This supercooled region of the cloud is very unstable, and it's where all precipitation occurs. Because as wind blows one tiny droplet or ice crystal through it, through the supercooled region, water molecules quickly grab onto it and form big, heavy droplets that then fall to earth as rain, snow, or hail, depending on the temperature of the cloud. Without supercooled regions of clouds, the raindrops or snowflakes would never form and get big enough to fall to earth. You can make your own supercooled water at home. All you need is some distilled water and find some empty water bottles. Be sure to rinse the water bottles well with distilled water several times. That way you can remove any hygroscopic nuclei. And then fill it up with distilled water and be sure to cap it. Try to avoid touching the bottles and minimize vibrations from the freezer with maybe a towel. Depends on your freezer, but two to three hours should be good. Our last topic is why is ice slippery? The surface of ice should be very rough, and scientists for years have not understood why the surface of ice is slippery. They now believe that the surface of ice is different than its bulk. That's because on the surface, the ice molecules are not surrounded by other ice molecules. So they can't form crystalline structures, so they keep their liquid properties forming a very thin liquid layer on the ice. So no matter how cold it gets, there's always a very thin layer of liquid water on the surface of ice, making ice slippery. Let's review what we talked about. First, thermal energy, or heat, is essentially the random chaotic motion of molecules. The hotter the molecules, the more energetic their chaotic motion. This understanding is what gives rise to scientists' understanding of solids, liquids, and gases. Cloud formation requires two special and odd ingredients, those being hygroscopic nuclei and supercooled water vapor. Since water droplets in a cloud cannot form on their own, hygroscopic nuclei are required to start the condensation process of water. Scientists have found that rain cannot occur in a cloud that does not have a supercooled region of water vapor. That's a cold region of a cloud with very few hygroscopic nuclei. And cold, too, where water stays in the vapor phase, even though it should condense due to the temperature. These regions allow large water droplets to form when a small ice crystal blows through it, forming such a large drop that it falls from the cloud due to gravity. And lastly, ice is slippery because no matter how cold it gets, there's always a thin layer of liquid water on the surface of ice to make it slippery.